Hey, I'm here with my good friend Matt Kloskowski to talk about his classes for the upcoming Photoshop Virtual Summit 4. Hey, Matt, good to see What's you. What's up, Dave? How's it going? Excellent. Thank you very much for asking, and I hope you're doing well as well. Hope you're uh, wrangling all the classes for the summit. <laughs> I, know I am. I got to tell you, it is fun stuff. I mean, seeing the, <laughs> the stuff coming in, it's going to be yes. a great... I can already tell my prediction already is people are going to love it because <laughs> the classes and the doing these interviews with instructors to find out kind of their thought process and what they're covering has been yeah. really interesting. Actually goes well beyond just seeing a description. So speaking of which you're yes. doing a class on Photoshop for Lightroom users. So what's the, what's the thought behind that class? What kind of things are you going to talk about? So that class is, you know, Lightroom, Lightroom does quite a bit. So if you're a Lightroom user, you're organizing your photos there, um, you know, finding everything there. And then you're doing, you have the develop area, which is where you're doing all your edits. Um, at some point for some people that that place doesn't have everything that they want. So, you know, distraction removal, we really can't do that inside of Lightroom. Um, replacing backgrounds. I have a whole big section on replacing backgrounds in the class because it's, you know, I, I, I consider a sky replacement or replacing a background. If you're changing a person's background, it's replacing a background. So, um, so that's a big, uh, a big part of it as well as just, you know, just replacing things. Distraction removal is a big one. And then some creative stuff too. So uh, if you want to, you know, collage multiple photos together, um, you want to do some image blending where you're going to blend one photo with another, add text, any design things, special effects that Lightroom can't do. We can do that inside of Photoshop. So that's uh, that's the class. It's It's been an interesting one to create because since October of 2021, a lot of the reasons you might jump to Photoshop for accurate selections to work on part of a photo right. is now kind of gone because mm -hmm. they have such good technology inside of Lightroom and Camera Raw now. So sure. it's a it's a it's it's a class I've taught before, but it's a class I've had to change because it you know things have changed since I did it last time. Right. So I imagine the uh, you're covering enough. You're not trying to teach someone all the ins and outs of Photoshop, but just sort of how to do those specific type of things that you're you're have referred to yeah yeah and and, and i think yeah i would say it's more for you know late beginner intermediate type of a person you you know how to get find your way around photoshop you just may necessarily not all know all the things to do and i think that's you know for a photographer to learn photoshop there's no reason there's no reason to learn this much of photoshop like you only need right yep. this much of photoshop mm -hmm. well and I, you know it's funny you should say that because i think for anyone going into Photoshop initially, it can be such an overwhelming program because what does it have like 70 tools or something? And But the reality is the average person, they use a handful of those on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. and then occasionally jump into other tools. And then there's some tools that just should not be there anymore. But that's a whole <laughs> yeah. other story. Yeah. <laughs> that all, and so, that, you know, my, if we talk about my other class, that actually ties into it. Yeah, well, I was going to say, so the other class is uh, an interesting title 10 things i wish i knew when i first was learning photoshop yeah so that one that one's that one's been fun to create one you know I'll, I'll even tip my hand a little bit like one of the things is i open up the photoshop interface and then i say you know if you're somebody that's just going to work on photos don't worry about this don't worry about this don't worry about this don't worry about this don't don't worry about basically 80% of photoshop right so, um, so that's a, uh, that's a, that's a fun one. It, it ties into what we were just talking about there, but, mm -hmm. um, and that's also an interesting one to create because, you know, the, the idea sounds good, but it's actually, it's a hard class to create. I had to almost change the title in my mind to 10 things that a Photoshop user starting now would wish that they'd known because <laughs> right. almost all the cool, like almost all the stuff I'm talking about wasn't re really even around when we were learning photoshop true. yeah that's true <laughs> so it's a uh it's 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 interesting you know a good you know camera raw is a good example mm -hmm. when when you and i started learning photoshop you opened up a photo into photoshop right and then right. you went to image adjustments or you did an adjustment layer for curves and for hue and saturation and for levels. And you added all these layers on top of each other to do all these different adjustments that you've gotten 
all these different menus. Today, right. you'd never do that. You'd open it yeah. up in camera raw first, do all that stuff, and then go into Photoshop to do what you can't do inside of camera raw. Right. So, so, that, so it's that, a, that makes an interesting point to me that even, shall we call them, seasoned Photoshop users might pick up some things because one of the things I've discovered, and I'm certainly no different, is we tend to be creatures of habit. So yeah. some people may not even be taking advantage of some of the newer uh, things that are available to them because they've had such a habit of doing things a certain way that watching a class like this to pick up some some of the new ideas that are fairly recent additions to Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah. I had somebody email me the other day and he's like, hey, I've, you know, I know Photoshop. I've been using it for 15 years, but I'm just not getting really good results when I go file automate photo merge. And I'm like, so you're using the panorama technology that was made, put into Photoshop two decades ago. Right. <laughs> um, and it's a lot better if you just go a different route to get right. there. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, again, it was a very seasoned Photoshop user. Been yeah. using it for a long time and just did the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, that's, that's always a challenge. And um, I was thinking when I saw the name of your class that if... Not, not that it would make any sense, but but my interpretation of it was things I wish were in Photoshop when I first learned it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's like, oh, that's so much easier. Like, remember, you know, like as a good example, select subject versus manually trying to make a selection around a person. It's like, hello. <laughs> and I, and I think it'll be an interesting. Yeah, it'll be an interesting class because I actually talk about that because I talked about, um, I talk about, selections and then and i and i say um i think one of the things i say is i wish i wish i knew i didn't need channels but mm. back in the day we kind of did need channels yeah but you, you don't need channels anymore and i and, but i think for people that are that are semi-experienced in some of this stuff it'll be interesting because i show them what we used to do in one of the examples i actually show how we used to make a selection with channels <laughs> you know versus now right. it's just like Select subject done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it missed a little tiny bit. Dang it all. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, then I'll use the quick selection tool, which magnetically gets it all. You know. <laughs> so I was doing a, a personal project where we're trying to envision what um, redoing our kitchen backsplash would look like. So I took a photo of our kitchen, and I thought, thinking I had my old Photoshop brain on, I was like. Uh, I should have taken some of that stuff off the countertop because selecting that <laughs> that workspace and then or the backsplash and then I went in with the object you know the object selection tool and it was like yeah. bang and I was like okay <laughs> done well that, yeah. that was easier than I thought so yeah. got to be careful though because now my wife's like oh could you do that with our bathroom I was like no hold on now nope. Nope. <laughs> can't do it to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it only works with kitchens it doesn't work yeah. with showers sorry <laughs> so can't uh, help you. Yeah. Little known uh, uh, drawback to Photoshop is it does not work on bathroom remodeling. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, both of those classes sound really interesting. And I'm sure, especially for people like I think, as you described it, it struck me that both people who are just starting out, but even, as we said, seasoned users will find something of interest for them, for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think they'll be fun. Awesome. Well, thanks very much for taking a few minutes to talk about your classes. As with all the classes, I'm looking forward to seeing yours i always enjoy your approach and always learn something so sure thanks man we'll will, will too so <laughs> sounds good see you yeah. at the summit see you at the summit all right <laughs>